Hello everyone and welcome to AE Juice. In this video, I'm going to show you what comes in the digital screen constructor pack from AE Juice and all of the possibilities you can create with it. Okay, so let's take a look at this first shot here. We can see that it's a really good effect and it's going to highlight some of our text. We can, of course, to choose to turn that highlight on or off, which I'll show you how to do. This is a very easy effect to do. It's all done for you. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to open my new composition here. And one thing to note is that when you open this application or the plugin for AE Juice, it's going to accommodate whatever settings your timeline are in. So if you're in 4K in your timeline, it's going to make sure it creates the template in 4K. If you have a 1080p sequence, it's going to accommodate that too. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's start with 4K. I'm going to go to Window, go to Extensions and AE Juice Pack Manager 4. So now you'll be taken to the plugin for AE Juice in Premiere Pro. Now there's a ton of packs here, but we're actually gonna go to the digital screen constructor right over here. One thing that you can see is that if I hover over it, once it loads, it'll give you a preview of what the pack looks like. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and click on it. And you can see right at the beginning here, there's a ton of options. There are really no limits to what you can create here. And it's also got a preview, so it loops. It's just the first few seconds of the preview, but it doesn't cut off where it cuts off in these previews. So let's just scroll until we find one that we like or want to use. And let's say we want to go with this one. Now with my 4K sequence selected here, if I click and drag, it'll show up in my timeline or I can go ahead and double click it and it's going to download that template into my 4K sequence here. So if you take a look, you'll see that it imports the template right where my timeline indicator is. So if I want to, I can just you know delete that and have it start right at the beginning of my timeline. You can see that it's already accommodated to the 4K sequence size. Now, if I go to the 1080p one, let's go ahead and import this again. And you'll see that once that's imported, it'll completely take up the 1080p sequence here. And it's all done really robustly. So you can have any project size and it'll accommodate to that size. Now, keep in mind that some of these templates have audio and some of them don't. For example, the one we just imported is just an image. There's really going to be no need to use any audio in that. However, let's scroll down and there is an example with a video which I will show you later, but this one will include an audio channel down beneath the video clip here when you import it into Premiere Pro. So it's something worth noting. So let's go ahead and edit this. First thing we need to do is select the clip that it's imported here. And what we're going to do is go to Window and we're going to go down to Essential Graphics. Now this is a dockable window, so let's go ahead and put it on the side here, just like that. Now there's a whole bunch of options we have here, so I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit. And what we're going to do is this is our placeholder, which is our main image. Let's assume we want to show off what we made for breakfast. Now, once I click and drag that image into here, it's going to populate automatically. It's all that easy, which took me two seconds to do. Now this will update in real time, but because I'm recording, it's not going to update on my screen right now, quick as I would want it to, but that's okay. Okay, so here's how we can edit this. Now it's all very straightforward, but this is going to be the title here. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to a website here with just some filler text. And let's just assume we want to use this as our title. So let's go ahead and select it and we're going to paste it in here. And if I click out of the box, it'll go ahead and update. One other thing you can do is with it selected, just adjust the scale. You can also do the font and the weight and just make it look the way you want it to look. Next is text two, which is right underneath. Let's go ahead and we can just update some of this. So AE juice, AE juice .com, And let's just assume that we're happy with that. So that'll update as well. And then if we go to text three, if we move forward in the timeline here, or in fact, if we move back in the timeline, you'll see that text is right over here. So we can also adjust that right here. Okay, so we've got the basic text adjusted, but let's go right to the beginning of our timeline. And you'll see that the text up here also needs to be changed. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm just gonna grab some filler text, 
copy that and let's go ahead and paste it in here. I'm going to paste it a few times, click out of the box, and then in a second, it'll update everything. It's so easy. It's amazing. So now I'm just going to scroll down here. Don't use a scroll wheel because once you hover over one of these scrolling, the wheel will adjust these and you might not want that. So I'm just going to grab the wheel over here and we're just going to drag it down. One neat little trick here is we can disable the haze look here or the screen kind of look over here. So let's go ahead and do that with this button here and it's going to look completely clean and without that haze or as if we're looking onto a computer screen. Some people like it, some people don't, or it just may depend on where you're going and what feel you want. But let's assume that we want to keep that. So I'm going to turn that back on. You can also just adjust the strength of that computer screen look. So you can adjust that with these two sliders here and also these ones over here. Of course, that's going to depend on your personal taste. So let's keep moving. Background color is going to be the background of your screen. So let's just assume that you like dark mode instead. Let's go ahead and put that there and it looks pretty cool. Obviously, you would probably take some of the filters away so that it doesn't look like this, which we can just do with that button again and it'll look like we're in dark mode. Of course, you'd have to change the color of the text to make it stand out, but you get the idea. Now the elements color is going to be like the dot and the line here. So let's just go ahead and assume we want to change it to red just to make it stand out so you can see the difference here. You can see that's now red, which is kind of cool. And then if we scroll further down here, this is the highlight color. So if we kind of go down the timeline and once it updates, you'll see that this is the color of this. So let's just assume we want to highlight it in red, make it stand out a lot. That's actually really cool. Now you can also adjust this. Let's say you don't even want to highlight a text in this at all. What we can do is just drag this slider and we'll just drag it completely out of frame and it's completely gone that easy. But assuming we want to keep it, we can also adjust how much of the text we highlight. So we can adjust the Y position up and down. We can also adjust the X position, which is left and right. And this is just increasing the right side of it so let's say you only want to highlight the first three words or even the first two words you can do that too and then if you want to let's say select the entire line here or the entire title let's go with maybe 60 that looks pretty good maybe even a little more to 65 that looks pretty good so in case you want to highlight the entire title you can do that now you can choose to turn the camera depth of field on or off now this can look pretty good depending on what your situation is or it might not it also will require a lot more computer resources so i'm not going to let it load i'm just going to leave it off just because it takes a lot of computer resources so just be sure that you have a decent computer if you want to be able to play it in real time or if you just want to turn it on then render out your video take a look at it at the end and see what it looks like just in case your ram preview is not going to be as good quality and with this checked on you can adjust the aperture the camera blur level and the focus distance and this would obviously be a little bit more tweaking according to your taste it's essentially going to work as if a real camera was filming the computer screen and parts of the image is going to be blurred out whereas the focal point when you choose the camera focus distance you're going to tweak that as well you can choose which is in focus and which isn't now the rest of the sliders and options here are pretty straightforward the text color is going to be very easy to tell it's going to name them all and i'm just going to undo that you can change the position of that text and the rotation and all of these parameters here are going to correspond to each individual text group here so depending on which one you want to change those ones are going to change and it's going to look the way you want it to look it's fully customizable in premiere pro but let's assume that you want to do this in after effects because you're more proficient in after effects or you just prefer editing there so here we are in after effects and one of the benefits of doing this in after effects is I feel like you get a lot more customization and the buttons are just a lot easier to use. And that's just because of the way After Effects works. Premiere Pro is a little clunky, so After Effects can be a lot easier to do this in. So if you wanna take a look here, sound is included, so you can hear that. And if this video had audio, you would also hear the audio from that clip, but it doesn't, so you're not gonna hear that. But it's very simple, very easy, and this takes very little work to do. So let's take a look and see how to do this. Let's start with the 2K composition here. Just like before, this pack will accommodate whatever project size you have. So let's go to window and we'll go to AE Juice Pack Manager 4. Notice that this is a dockable window, just like Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and dock it into the side here and you can choose to have it on the side. I'm actually just going to unlock it so that I can see it in full view. And that way we can really check out what this has to offer so just like before there's a ton of options here but let's go ahead down to the video one 
And then again, like before with my composition selected, I can choose to double click it or just drag it right into here. Once I do that, it's gonna go ahead and download all the necessary assets and then it's gonna populate my timeline here. So let's go ahead and close AE Juice and let's see what we've got here. Okay, so now this is going to update more quickly than what it is right here because I'm doing a recording. So it's going to be a little bit slower, but this is going to play just like this video over here that we just took a look at. Now the 1080p project, let's go ahead and import the same AE Juice plugin or asset here. So let's go ahead and double click it. And once that downloads here, you'll see here that again, it's accommodated the size of the project. So this is a 1080p project and it fits just fine. The same thing with the 4K project. Let's stick with the 1080p because I feel like we're going to be able to work quicker while I'm recording. Let's go ahead and double click this layer over here and we're going to go into the properties of this by clicking the controls button. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so we can actually see what we're doing. And just like before in Premiere Pro, all of these are going to be pretty much the same. You can choose a checkbox to turn off the screen look. So if I go ahead and just show you what it looks like without the screen effect and let's do full resolution so you can see everything. And then if I turn it back on you'll see that that's what the effect looks like on and off so let's go ahead back to half and i'm going to turn the effect back on because i think it looks pretty cool and helps sell the effect a lot or actually i did that wrong there we go now it's going to be showing and again you can choose how strong the grid or the screen effect is with these two sliders that's cool again before background color let's say you want to do you know dark mode just like before you can do that Let's go ahead and click on the first placeholder. And this is going to be the logo. So let's just drag in your logo here and we'll scale it down to the composition size. We're going to go ahead and delete the background layer. And let's go back to the Twitter main Twitter section. So if we go ahead and zoom out or, or scroll down, you'll see that it updates in the logo section. Now let's go to the second placeholder and this is going to be the video. So let's drag our video into here. And again, we're going to scale this down to the composition size or it doesn't have to be exact. We don't need to delete this, but we'll do it anyways. It's being covered by the video on top. And you can see that's already populated. So easy and simple. Now these text placeholders, these are gonna be essentially, you know, what's explained is the text. And you can control what these say. So here's the view count. Then here we've got the home page. Let's go back to the main Twitter and the second placeholder for the text. Go ahead and zoom in. You'll see you can control the name. You can choose the at, you know, pretty much everything else here. So hashtag how many people commented, retweeted, liked, and so forth. Then if we go to the third placeholder here for all the text, this is the post beneath the actual post. So if you take a look towards the end here, you'll see that there's a second post because that's how Twitter works. So you can choose what that looks like. Maybe you want to do a second post of yourself. That's okay too. So whether you're in Premiere Pro and you want to create just a basic template, really quick and easy, make it look like you posted a blog post on what you can create for breakfast. Or if you're in After Effects for a smoother workflow, you can use Digital Screen Constructor to essentially create whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you have any suggestions for future products, and we really hope you enjoyed this video. We can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks and stay creative.